Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Nicole Capizzi. And I'm Molly Fox. Here's your weekly update. Cabrini student Daniel Bowden was charged for reporting a bomb threat in Woodcrest Hall. The phone call was made to the second floor of the building on Sunday, March 17th. According to police, Bowden is facing three felony counts, each of terrorist threats. He is also being charged for seven various misdemeanor counts. His preliminary hearing has not yet been scheduled. The Radnor Township Police Department has come out with a public report that last year they responded to over a thousand more calls in 2012 than the year before. According to the data, there were nearly 20,000 calls in 2011. The calls varied from speeding tickets to domestic disputes. Radnor's police superintendent, William Colarulo, has said that they need more officers and that the numbers of officers have dwindled in the past. Get ready to put your knowledge to the test as you compete during Quizzo. Teams up to four people will be allowed. Prizes will also be awarded each round as well as a grand prize. The event will be in Jasmine's Cafe on April 2nd from 8 to 10 p.m. Cabrini College and the Red Cross hosted a blood drive again. Let's check in with Christy to see how it went. On Monday, March 18th, the American Red Cross hosted a blood drive here at the college. Students, faculty, and members of the community came out throughout the day to donate blood for a good cause. I gave blood once before last year when Red Cross came to Cabrini. I decided to give blood today because I wanted to save a life. Donating blood is a simple four-step process. First, you have to register and give your medical history. Then you have to take a quick physical, donate, and then enjoy the refreshments. The actual blood donation typically takes less than 15 minutes. Blood donation is an integral part of the health and well-being of the community. The need is constant, and there is no substitute for volunteer blood donations. Some people don't realize how helpful one pint of blood can be. One donation can save the lives of up to three people. The information that you give to the American Red Cross while donating is always confidential. Just gave blood and I feel great. I listen to music and I rolled the gripper to keep myself calm. I'm Christy Murphy, on location for location. Now back to the news desk. That was your trip around the block. So Kevin, what's new in sports this week? Well, unfortunately, the men's basketball team's run to a national championship is over, but it was a great run and we have more on it in sports. Let's take a look. The men's basketball team saw their national championship hopes dashed in the Elite Eight on Friday. They suffered a 101-82 loss to number two Amherst College ending their season with the 25-6 record. Location was there at the post-game press conference with head coach Marcus Kahn and guard Aaron Walton Moss. Let's take a look at what they had to say. I know there was two very good teams that went at it from the start. Uh, one was much more consistent tonight than the other. And I thought once we got behind, we forced the issue a little bit early in the first half hung our heads when we should not have. We missed a couple shots that maybe we would normally make, maybe we expected to make. First time in a long time that we've been out rebounded, especially like that. Uh, we're pretty good at getting that stop initially. Um, we've always played bigger teams, stronger teams, but we usually win the battle on the boards. And it was obvious in the first half that that was gonna be a tough, tough task tonight. Yeah, they out hustled us today. And as you can see the rebounds, second chance points and us on the free not making it a lot of free throws it hurt us a lot you know? it hurts but sometimes you can't it's, it's a game it's, it's, it's got many more to come for some players but it always hurts losing but it's, it's hard it's just, you just gotta brush it off a guy like aj williams was my first recruit to cabrini there are guys in this building guys back home watching the game that would die to have the career he had. That being said, we got a good, good group of guys that made a good run this year. And I'm extremely proud of uh, the effort that they put out. The men's lacrosse team improved to four and three with a 12 to eight win over number 16 Union College on Sunday. Corey Elmer, Damian Sobieski, and Anthony DeSanzo all scored three goals in the win. The Cavs returned to action on Friday when they traveled to face number 15 Ithaca College. The women's lacrosse team picked up their first two wins of the season in the past week.
They defeated Notre Dame of Maryland University on Saturday, 18 to six, then topped Cedar Crest College on Tuesday, 16 to nothing. They go for their third straight win on Wednesday when they host Alvernia University. The Phillies continue to look alive and well at the plate in a 10-1 win over the Tampa Bay Rays in spring training action on Tuesday. The Phillies have just two remaining games in Florida before returning to Philadelphia for a pair of exhibition games this weekend. Opening day is on Monday as the Phillies face the Atlanta Braves at 7 p.m. Tune in next week for an update on Cabrini Lacrosse as well as a look at the first game of the Phillies 2013 season. Now here's Molly with your trip across the nation. An SUV plunged off the side of the Sierra Highway in Los Angeles and landed 200 feet into a ravine this past week. A nine-year-old girl freed herself and crawled out of the window of the overturned vehicle while her father lay unconscious. The young girl smelled gasoline, turned off the engine, and started walking in the dark up the steep terrain. She managed to find help after walking for two miles. The young girl was rushed to Children's Hospital of Los Angeles and is now listed in good condition. Unfortunately, the father did not survive. It's been more than a week since Brown University student Sue Niltrapathy was last seen, but authorities appear to be no closer to knowing where he is. Authorities are searching Providence, Rhode Island and nearby cities for any sign of the missing 22-year-old man. Trapathy was last seen in the campus area on the morning of March 16th. He was wearing blue jeans, a black Eastern Mountain sports ski jacket, glasses, and a Philadelphia Eagles wool hat. He's about 6 feet tall, 130 pounds, and has short, dark hair, according to police. President of Brown University, Margaret Kahn, said in a statement, We are hopeful that by encouraging the Brown community to help spread the word that Sue Nil will be located. This past weekend in Hartford, Connecticut, a 5K run was held for families affected by the Sandy Hook Elementary Massacre this past December. There was a record-breaking number of runners of about 15,000, making it the largest run in the state. Race organizers estimated that additional 30,000 spectators gathered along the route. The run raised nearly half a million dollars. Auditions for C Factor Talent Show were held last week. Let's check in with Heather to see who came out. I think the audition went really well. Um, I was a little bit nervous because I didn't practice much before I auditioned, but after I went, I was really relieved and I thought it went really good. Well, this evening I performed a poem that I wrote myself. It was about my sister and it was entitled Sets of Two. Um, I think I did, I did okay. Um, I think I could have did better, but for the audition I think it was fine. I played the violin. I played Bring Him Home from Les Miserables on the violin. Um, I am excited. I don't get a chance to perform much at all. So being given the opportunity to do something like the C Factor will give me more experience with performing and that'll help me improve. So in that aspect, I'm really excited. <laughs> I am. Ex I would be excited if I made it. Um, I'm not sure if I would do the same piece. Maybe I would do the same piece, but I'm thinking about a Mumford and Son song, actually. I did poetry before. A few months ago, I performed poetry and people were saying I did a really good job and they really liked the poem. And I was like, I, I enjoy doing it and I enjoy writing poetry, so I thought this would be great for me to do. To see who made it to the next round, come to the C Factor Monday, April 22nd at 8 p.m. This is Heather Lafragola on location for location. Now back to the studio. That was your trip across the nation. Christine, what's going on with entertainment? Well, Kim Kardashian was recently named War Stress, so let me tell you more about it. Is Kim Kardashian giving Kanye West a bad fashion name? On this week's episode of Courtney and Kim Take Miami, Kim agonized over her fashion choices and worried that she may be making Kanye West look bad because of the way she dresses. Now that she and Kanye are together, people assume that when she dressed poorly, it was Kanye's decision. Leave it to Kim K to worry more about her wardrobe instead of her pending divorce from Chris Humphreys. The long wait of the return of Game of Thrones is almost over. HBO released that the third season is set to air this Sunday, March 31st. The season promises to be the best yet, with the show opens with the claim to the throne still very much up for grabs. A host of new characters, including a pair of full-grown dragons, promises to make this season the most exciting yet. Will Joffrey finally get what he deserves? That was your weekly entertainment update. Now here's Nicole with your trip around the world. 
A Bulgarian man died Friday after setting himself on fire to protest poverty and corruption. The incident was the sixth in a recent series of similarly motivated self-immolations in the country. The self-immolations began in February in Bulgaria, the poorest country in the European Union, where 20% of its people live under the poverty line. The wave of nationwide protests was sparked by public outrage against government corruption and poverty. 25 years after the fall of communism, public self-immolations are not new to Bulgaria and have occurred throughout the world and in many different cultures. The new interim government met on Friday with employers and unions to discuss urgent measures to help the disadvantaged and prevent further such incidents. On Tuesday, North Korea threatened strikes targeting military bases in Guam, Hawaii, and the U.S. mainland, analysts say. The Pentagon and South Korean military on Friday signed a new plan to defend the country against possible attack. While experts think that these new wave of threats are empty and will continue to further isolate North Korea, the Pentagon said it is confident that it can handle any military compatibilities that North Korea can come up with. As partisans argued over same-sex marriage outside the U.S. Supreme Court, justices inside hinted at their different views on the issue, though it's far from clear how they will rule. In the case argued Tuesday, the nine justices could fundamentally alter how American law treats marriage. On one extreme, the court could extend a constitutional right for gays and lesbians to wed in all 50 states. On the other, it could deal a major setback to the gay rights movement. And of course, there are options in between. Location got the chance to attend a unique alumni networking event in Grace Hall. Let's take a look. The ground rules, which is very complicated. So. Cabrini College's seniors had the chance to experience a unique alumni mixer. The event started with a debriefing of what the different sections were and the best way to communicate and network within these sections. The bar was used to simulate different, different type of food and drinks that you may encounter when you are networking in a bar. Balancing drinks, when to drink, and learning how much to eat were some of the lessons taught at this event. The coffee shop was used to simulate conversation in fast-paced environments and to show students how to network within a restricted time frame. Students also practice disengaging from conversation and then re-engaging with other alumni. This is just another way Cabrini College prepares its students for life outside the classroom and in the real world. Thanks for catching up with us this week. For Location Weekly News, I'm Nicole Capizzi. And I'm Molly Fox. Be sure to stay updated with us this week by following us on our social media sites. Simply search Location News. Have a great Easter break, Cabrini.